I just want to recap what we've covered today. So we've looked at how we find investors. Where do we find investors and how do we find investors? How do we screen the investors? Because otherwise you're going to do shed loads of, of meetings that are inefficient. And I want you to only meet the one and two that say yes, the one and two that say no. I don't want you to meet the 10 of which nine will say no, because that'll be debilitating and confidence giving. So screen the investors. What's your time frame? What's your objective? What's your pot? Then looking at pitching, both pitching in what you might call the first meet, which is what you practiced yesterday, and then the light-hearted but nonetheless terrifying stand-up initial 30-second, 20-second elevator pitch. So how do you focus on pitching? What do you do body language? How do you make sure you give the kind of executive summary, what's in it for me, and then leave the detail for the first meet? Then we talked about process. And for those that want to turn a fundraising campaign into a project, that's when it became, started to become quite clear for you, oh, this is a process, and I can follow this process. There are statistical outcomes if I effectively execute this process. It's pretty much guaranteed. So follow the process, screen correctly, do follow, meet 10 business cards, follow up with every single one, two coffees. One and two will say yes, one and two will say no. Cool. And then ask, so you, um, you the, the, the progress so says ask, um, so pitch, ask, and they can decline or they can pledge or they can give you the money. Don't forget to ask. Classic British embarrassment. Whether you have to um, tempt yourself with spoonfuls of Nutella, as I did in the early days, or whether you just have to force yourself because you're going to auction on Thursday for a property and you need 75 grand still to make it happen, ask. Present the deals. What would you like to see if you were on the other side? We talked about 10 or 9 pieces of information being far too low a statistic just to make sure the valuation is correct. We, look, we like to do around 45 pieces of valuation and triangulate. So estate agents, previous solds, current on the market or sold subject to contract. Also, if you're presenting early on, present your credibility. Who are you? What's your background? What are your transferable skills? What are your current, what's your current asset base? If you're in a job, what's your salary? I used to show my pay slip when I was still working because it, 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 it proved. You know, I used to show my personal mortgage because I didn't have many more than that. I only had two extra. Um, show your business plan. You know, all of the information that you can put together so that your investor can do as much due diligence effectively. Now in the age of social media, please make sure your LinkedIn profile is up to date. Please make sure you separate off a personal profile to a, a, a professional profile on Facebook. You may or may not want to do Twitter. We, we do, we actually do Instagram, but certainly LinkedIn and Facebook is an absolute key. So if you've got a Facebook profile that's personal, like I do, where I'm in, um, little gym shorts all the time, that is private. <laughs> Whereas my, pe my professional face, well, it, it is. <laughs> I did have one investor find some of my weightlifting and he was like, nice legs. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm going to try and make that private as well. Then communication, whether it's newsletter, whether it's phone calls, whether it's in group meetings, little group conference calls, make sure you have an agreed communication strategy with your investors and make sure you stick to it or if you know that you won't be able to stick to it because it's the thing that will fall down let them know in advance you're going to be frustrated slightly i don't mean it it's just i'm so busy working on the project you'll get less communication than you necessarily will look for and all the systems we've talked about remember your two investors to avoid your prima donnas who will tantrum when you take their toy away and they will tantrum if you make them share the toy Okay, fine. You're not here for them. You're here for yourself and them as equal partners. And also your non-committals there, either give them a date deadline or a financial deadline. And that will allow them to decide to step over the fence or say, I'm sorry, I'm actually being rebuffed now. Again, it's tragic, but it is the case. Um, so we've talked about that yesterday and I want you to avoid those kind of investors because they will give you heartache. And then we did a recap really to get you guys to, to flush out, and it worked beautifully, thank you very much. Uh, it was very super of you, looking at the structures this morning uh, particularly, because that was the main set of questions for you guys. Then how did you get to a yes? I took three of my examples on the JV side rather than the raising, uh, just pure raising loans, and we looked at how we got somebody to a, a, a yes at four months, oh sorry, how they got themselves 
to a yes at four months and how someone else took 12 months to get to a yes. How many touch points were involved? Um, you saw the evidence of the different touch points. And I found, despite us having a very high profile now in our little goldfish bowl of our industry, that hasn't changed. So it's nothing about profile, it's about that person growing and developing trust with you. So, so there's no difference, my stats to your stats. Then we talked about paperwork, we talked about 13.3 process, and I encourage you strongly to read 13.3. The folders we've got on your um, desks are actually ours, we'll, bring, we'll take them home again, but please print off 13.3 for yourselves. And then we talked again about JV structures, which was very helpful, thank you. And again, the process of a joint venture rather than the process of getting to yes. Deal presentation, we went over briefly, plan A, plan B, which is the safety, you know, you're going to buy and sell it, but if it doesn't buy and sell, this is what I'm going to do to make sure that we've got plan B. And then you have the deep joy, Holly, <laughs> of pitching. So thank you very much, all of you, because you all got good feedback from your groups and all had the experience of how terrifying it is to pitch and what you were doing well and what you can improve. Where we're deciding that physicality and faking it till you make it, the Amy Cuddy talk on TED Talks is of real relevance to you guys. And then we just briefly mentioned worst case scenario. So I don't want you to oversell something because we know that things can go wrong, but it's useful for your investors to know what can go wrong so that they're still signed up for it.